Hello everyone, this is Ronnie and uh, just another video and this is something that's been that I had a little debate about recently on Facebook and wanted to wanted to talk to you all about a little bit and that is the whole anti anti-vaccination or vaccination argument and in the raw vegan community, the raw vegan movement there's a lot of people over the years going back decades, going back a long long time that are very sceptical about vaccines in the raw food movement and very, uh, you know, kind of recommend other people don't take them, don't take them themselves, uh, kind of see it all as a bit of a myth, think that it's, you know, that it's really if the person did a better diet they wouldn't, they wouldn't get these problems and wouldn't get these illnesses. So there's a lot of scepticism in the raw vegan movement towards a lot of things because basically we've all realised that a lot of the information out there from the mainstream or what we think of as information from the mainstream when it comes to our diet and lifestyle, we've personally realised that that information is incorrect and that that diet is harming people, harming the planet, harming the environment. And we kind of develop this mindset sometimes where we start to look at other things in the same way and we start to think that just because just because one aspect of information or knowledge from the mainstream is wrong that maybe other things are wrong as well or we look to find other things that are wrong and people also in the raw vegan and natural health movement they develop a couple of major sort of biases in way that they look at the world the first one is that they have a bias that everything natural or anything natural is better than something man-made and they also have, have often a bias against large corporations, against the medical industry, against the pharmaceutical industry, against the government's information and so on. And we, we hear this thing all the time about science can just all be bought and paid for and the big pharma controls everything and, and, and all these kind of things. So personally, uh, my whole journey with, with this kind of stuff is that I did at one point, uh, I was I was really into that mindset as well. What I mean by that is I started to do a raw vegan diet and I, and I started to learn about it and research it and everything and I started to think that basically there was a, a natural lifestyle and a natural environment that if we could somehow uh, replicate that or get that or get that in place as much as possible then you would never get sick and you would develop superhuman powers and um, you would never need any unnatural man-made synthetic products and and you know nature would just support you and everything would be perfect right and so I was kind of avoiding a lot of these different products and different things and and trying to see sort of how far I could go I guess with a more natural lifestyle and what I've realized over the years is it's not as simple as that when it comes to your health when it comes to good decisions in your life it's not as simple as you just always go for the thing that's natural or the thing that's closest to nature or or try and work out how would we do this in nature and think to yourself, well, we wouldn't do that in nature, so we shouldn't do that. You know, it's not as simple as that. It's just not as simple as that. And we're not living in the state of nature. We don't live in small communities and who knows where we lived in forests or rainforests or whatever. Um, it's not as simple as that. It's not a black and white. When it comes to you making a decision about, especially about your health and things that are impacting your health, it's not as simple as, as, as saying, even with food, it's not as simple as raw is always better than cooked. It's not as simple as, um, I was going to say vegan is always better than animal products, but basically it is as simple as that when it comes to that. <laughs> but uh, it's not always as simple as... Um, high fat is better than low fat or whatever it's, it's, there's there's gray and white in different areas there's different things to consider so what i've seen over the years starting from this position of thinking that the raw vegan diet and, and nature and being more natural would like heal everything what i've found is that many people pardon me is to swallow many people that i've met have come to harm some that I've met, some that I've not met, some that are acquaintances of other people and stories that I've heard. Many, many people have come to harm through being negligent really and, and not taking the advice that they might have been offered by doctors or dentists or therapists or whatever. 
You know, there's, there's, there's so many different situations. And when it comes to our health, the, the raw vegan diet is only going to help you if the cure or, or the thing that's causing your problem is a bad diet. It's only going to help you if the thing causing your problem is a bad diet, which is the cause to so many problems. So that's why it's so effective for so many people. But to then think that it works for absolutely everything is, is not correct. That's not the correct way to look at it. So if you have an issue that is not caused by the diet, you cannot heal it by diet. And this is where natural health promoters and, and who knows, naturopaths, natural hygiene people have failed people over the years. And if we look back to the start of the century, 100 years ago, uh, last century, 120 years ago or so, and we look back to that time, we find probably so many situations where, where these practitioners were given information that was really damaging to people. And if, for example, if, for example, uh, someone was type 1 diabetic before we knew what that was, and you said to them, well, you just need to have a natural diet. It's your diet that's wrong. Well, in that situation, clearly it's not the diet. It's the fact that they've got type 1 diabetes. Whether they got that through the diet that they previously had, whether that was something they were born with, uh, who, who knows exactly. But the solution wasn't to change their diet. Their solution was insulin. And when it comes to so many diseases in the past and problems that happened in the past, the solution wasn't change your diet. That didn't work. That did not work. So we look back to previous centuries and going further back and we find people dying in massive, massive amounts of infection and childhood diseases and uh, inf infectious diseases. And obviously in childbirth and from different, if, if they had an accident or they had a particular injury, there was no, there was no way of stopping infection from setting in and, 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 these, and these kind of things. And people de dying of dehydration from certain things cause, uh, uh, because there was no ability to, to put IV drips in people and things like that. So there was a lot of medical interventions that have led us to a point where a lot of these diseases and things don't happen anymore. So now we can say that so many of the diseases, the real things that people are dealing with now, are diet related. But we can't just say that for all of time. We can't just look back and say that no medical procedures ever helped. And so when we look into vaccinations, firstly a lot of people are, are skeptical about it from the outset. And always have been. This goes. This isn't something new. This isn't anything to do with new information. It's nothing to do with information that you think is right or not. Nothing to do with that. This is a bias that people have against medicine, medical uh, procedures, against corporations, all these things, and against anything unnatural. And uh, that's that's just a part of human nature. I. Probably didn't think that much about vaccines. I just I I I I I decided like I I generally wasn't going to take them, you know, and I didn't really think too much about it, and I didn't know a lot about it. And if I did go on holiday, I would just think oh, I don't really need to do that. And and you know, there's an influenza influenza vaccine every year, and I just thought oh, I don't need to do that. And probably maybe I would continue not to make that choice uh, to make that choice because. I've, not, I've never suffered from influenza, so maybe that's silly of me to say, well, I'm not going to take the vaccine. I, I don't know, but um, that's, that's where I've been at the last few years. But to advise people not to take vaccines or to advise people to not vaccinate your, their children, I think it's really, really irresponsible advice. And it's all coming from people that really, I don't think, have anywhere near the information or research to understand what they're talking about. And that's what I truly, truly believe now. So you've got to watch out where you get your information from. And what I see is this arrogance in so many people when I, when I, posted, when I post something about vaccinations, that they say, I'm going to do my own research on this. I want to see the research. Um, I don't want to just be told what to do by the doctors, right? <clears throat> it's pure arrogance. Like the idea that, firstly, 
Firstly, the idea that you are going to understand the science and the entire context of it and all of the information involved. Really think about that. Go to your local university library if you can. Pick up a PhD thesis in, in uh, vaccine and something related to that field. Try and get past the first page and see if you understand anything that you've just read. I mean, seriously, if you can do that, then okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say to you, uh, you know, fair enough. If you can understand that, you've obviously got the, 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 the research, the education to do that. But the amount of people that don't have the education to do that is vast. And it probably means most people who haven't had scientific or medical training in that particular area of interest. So the idea that you can do the research, I've done the research, I've done the research, I'm going to do the research. No, have you done the research? Have you just looked at websites and stuff that they've pushed you towards particular, particular things that back their, their, um, their ideas? You know, this isn't the same as understanding the science and the research behind it. So it's pure arrogance from people to think I'm going to go and do the research. They just become a victim of the anti-vax movement and or maybe even the pro-vax movement or whatever who who have these studies that are just way too simple to actually be a study. Like if the study says this shows that vaccines cause autism like that's not a study like that's just something that they've made up <laughs> like to fool you that's something that they've made it so simple so that someone like you can understand it that's not a vaccination study that's not how it works if it's so simple that you can read it it's like oh i've read the science on this no you've not really read the science on it They're like the, i don't know 100 120 years of science god knows how many thousands of you know, stu studies and tests and everything. And so the big kind of myths of the vaccination thing is that this thing spread like wildfire, that autism is caused, caused by the MMR vaccine. Autism is caused by the MMR vaccine, you know, and it's, and it's, it's just not true. <laughs> right? but, but people are still spreading that idea. Why? Because they buy into the conspiracy. You love the story, the drama. It's nothing to do with the, the science and the research. It's the fact that you've bought into this conspiracy that there's, there's some evil people in a pharmaceutical company that are trying to like uh, har harm everyone and, and make loads of money for their greedy pockets, you know. It's, it's silly. It's just really silly and it's really irresponsible of anyone in the raw vegan movement to act like they know better than the industries that are, the, the, the bodies that are independent, not, not just... Because everyone says, oh, it's biased and everything. What about the independent bodies? What about the independent organisations? And let's look at vaccination. And, and once again, you can, you can do your own research or whatever. You can go and look at your own stuff. I don't believe I've got the ability to look at the research. My brother, I've got two brothers that have done, in fact, my two brothers and my mum have done PhDs, right? Um... My mom in uh, electronic engineering, my brother in medical uh, kidney stuff, kidney specialist, my other brother in mathematics, right? So I've seen what that level of understanding is. You cannot understand the first paragraph, never mind the first page of actual, actual research and, and actual uh, specialist work in these areas and that's the way I feel about this like the, the idea that you're going to understand it if you're not uh, trained in that area is just to me like ludicrous and so what you actually do is you don't research the science what you do is you come across the articles and the things that you are given the the graphs that are shown to you those graphs that say look Vaccination, like the diseases came down and then vaccinations happened and the disease just kept on in the same trajectory. There's lots of stuff like that that's been made to manipulate you. Um, there's lots of stuff like that that doesn't tell the whole story. There's lots of websites that are showing this thing, you know. And let's look at the real evidence as far as we know. Infectious diseases killed hundreds of millions to maybe up to even a billion people in 
the 20, 20th century, right? Hundreds of millions of people. Hundreds of millions. And the, the post that I shared on Facebook, I said that I was speaking to some of my elder relatives and I said, did you ever get mumps or measles or rubella and things like that? And, and they were saying, yeah, they got, they got a bunch of these things. And I found out that one of my aunties went deaf in one ear because of mumps. And I found out that another, uh, effectively, an auntie in, in my family, she's always had a bad leg, but she's always had a problem with, with walking. It turns out it was because of polio. I never realised that. I never knew that. Um, my dad had diphtheria, had to go to hospital for, 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 um, for a while. My other, I had an uncle that had tuberculosis, was in hospital for six months. And if you keep on asking, you find out all these stories and stories and stories of things that were happening. And my generation, I didn't know anyone that had polio, diphtheria, like uh, measles, mumps, rubella tuberculosis. I was, I was vaccinated against all these things. There was one thing that I wasn't vaccinated against. It was uh, whooping cough. And I got whooping cough and so did my brothers. So the one thing that we weren't vaccinated against, we all got. Now, it doesn't kill you, but I think that we were off school for like a month, weeks, at least three weeks. It was a, it was a long time. Um, so I'm just fascinated by the fact that people don't have any perspective don't have any perspective about these things and people say oh well measles it's like people say all sorts of weird things measles it wasn't so bad you know people had little measles parties and 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 all these things but measles still killed people and it still does today there's still people that die of measles and you might and and and, and this is when people start to say things like yeah but it's actually about nutrition and if people had a better diet and, and malnutrition was a problem back then. And this is where it gets confusing to me because apparently now everyone back then had malnutrition and had a bad diet. So that's why everyone got an infectious disease. Like how does that work? Because everyone says to me at the same time, the food used to be so much more nutritious back then. The food used to be so much more nutritious, but everyone also had malnutrition. And when I think about my... My family, I'm sure they were eating a better diet when they were growing up than they're eating now. I'm sure, I'm sure they're eating, they were eating a better diet then than a lot of people were now. You know, so they were growing all, they were growing a lot of their own food, all that stuff that people talk about, grow your own. Well, that's what people were doing back then. They were growing their own. They were getting their food from the ground, you know, or from the trees or whatever. They didn't eat as much meat. They didn't eat processed foods. They didn't have as much food. But what you're going to say is, well, they didn't do a fruitarian diet, they didn't do a raw vegan diet. Oh, fair enough. Who knows, right, if that's, if that's the case. But this is the question. Are you going to, uh, knowing that people don't do a raw vegan diet, are you going to suggest that no one gets vaccinated? You know, this, this, is, this is the problem. So you're going to ask me, where's my research? Where's my information? Where's my studies? Because you want to link this study and that study and look at the vaccine inserts and look at the bad things they put in them and look at this connection with this and this connection with that. And that's all fine, but I'm telling you, I'm not the person to go to. The, the, the experts in these fields who have knowledge above ours, who have an understanding above ours, whether you want to believe that or not, they have that. They have years of research and study in these areas. They have training that allows them to understand that, the vocabulary, the words, the context, the procedures, so that when they look at it, it's not a page of gobbledygook. It's stuff that they understand. And when you see that, and they are the people to go to. They are the people to look to. They are the people to ask. Not journalists. Not someone wanting to write a book. Not someone who unfortunately mistakenly believes that their child has autism because of MMR or something like that. And has been convinced of that by bogus information. So this is the, the thing that people were saying to me. I'm not anti-vax, but I want to do my own research on it. I'm not like. You don't need to do your research. You know, how come you're not, are you going to go and do your research on whether gravity exists? Or are you going to do your research on something, you know, you're not convinced that this, that the bridge is going to hold up that they're building in the local town. You want to research engineering just to make sure that they know what they're doing with putting up a bridge, you know. It's, you're going to drive over that bridge. 
that's probably much much bigger risk to your health than a vaccine but you're going to do it you're going to drive in a car you're not going to research car engines and go into it and work out you're going to put yourself at much more risk going driving in a car at 70 miles an hour without researching anything about the engine about the car about anything but you're going to research about vaccines because you're such an expert like I, I just don't get it right i just don't get it and um, i'm over telling people or or this idea that people shouldn't go to the doctor and shouldn't take uh, medication and shouldn't take antibiotics and shouldn't this and that this is really bad advice it's not as simple as it's just about a diet it's not as simple as that it is as simple as that for many people for many problems but avoiding the advice of doctors and uh, other medical people is just not something that I want to uh, that I have ever really promoted or want to promote it's, it's not something I think is it's and, and there's too many stories of people coming to harm from this attitude too many stories too many stories of people coming to harm and um, it's uh, no one should come into this diet and lifestyle and end up coming to harm and this is what's happening to people because they're not willing to take antibiotics when they get when they get bacterial infections and um, when they get cancer they don't want to get it cut out or whatever they think they're going to heal it the natural way and and all this stuff so man I I had a friend that came in yesterday probably he's, he's a he's a butcher he probably eats loads of meat probably a really unhealthy diet he had cancer a while back and he beat cancer through chemotherapy didn't change his diet unfortunately maybe he has a little bit but I've known people that were vegan, raw vegans and health people that have that died of cancer because they wouldn't do things like that. They wouldn't just take the advice. You know, so I, uh, I am over that. I'm just over that. It's, it's, this diet has to be in alignment with the correct information on other things. And this whole like, Oh, look at the look at this video about vaccinations. Look, they're bad. You know, this is school playground stuff. This isn't the real information. So, that's my kind of feeling on vaccination and everything. I am not, I'm I'm not really giving any opinion on it. I'm just happy to say the opinion of the mainstream of science in that regard is what I'm happy to accept as real. You know, un, un, until someone is, I don't think there's an, a real credible um, information showing the opposite. Not when it's so universally accepted and when it's so obviously led to so many diseases now being, you, you basically have no risk of having them. Smallpox disappearing, um, polio basically never happening anymore. These were things that happened all the time back then, ruined people's lives. So that's my message. If you don't agree, feel free to put your information, your comments below and whatever. But really, just pause a minute and, and see: Can could you? Do you really think you can do the research? And I'm not saying this in an arrogant way. I'm not saying this in an arrogant way. But could you do the research? If you've never played music or played a guitar and I start speaking to you about things in a guitar, you're not going to understand very quickly what I'm talking about. I can start going into technical jargon or things that guitar players say, you know, and when it comes to my uh, Aikido practice or whatever, I can start talking about that in a way that you don't understand. I can start very easily with things that aren't all that technical. But you think you're going to look at the most technical information, scientific technical information, you're going to read through thousands and thousands of papers, thousands of hours of research, so that you can confirm an answer. Why don't you just let the people that are the experts to deal with it? So that's my, my thoughts on this. Thank you for watching. Share, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.